Oh, we got Karen's here. Oh, we're getting more and more people in. Yeah, guys, we're just going to be like five more minutes or so, just because a lot of people are just realizing that they had to download Zoom and they didn't know that they, they have to do that. So um, just excuse us for a couple of minutes. Hey, Kieran. Can you hear me, Richard? Yes, we can hear you, mate. I'm going to eventually mute everyone. I'm just going to wait for everybody to come in. Still got people that need to um, download Zoom. It's a bit of a slow start. But we are OK. Oh, Joshua. So some of you are already here. I'm just going to quickly go through what we're going to do in the beginning. So very first thing, we're going to um, do a very small meditation here, just like three minutes to get us all connected a little bit in our hearts and everything. Um, and then I'm going to give you guys the whole plan of what we're going to go through here today. So it's going to be a lot of stuff we're going to cover. Um, we might probably about finish in an hour, depending on, on the whole thing. Um, obviously like I'm going to leave the last, so we, if we run over a little bit an hour, that's because I'm going to leave the last bit for questions. So if any of you guys want to know more about any of this stuff, if you've got any sort of personal questions regarding this, um, then we can just sort of go through that. And if you guys got any sort of personal experiences you want to talk about, then we're open to hear that. Hey, Josh. Okay, guys, let's, I'd say let's start. And then um, if anybody joins, then I'll just let them in. Okay, so get yourself in a comfortable position. Any sort of seat position will do. I'd like you to just close your eyes. And just start to focus on your breath. And as you're sitting here with each and every exhalation, you're going to relax your body more and more. I'd like you to imagine a glowing light in your heart center. And as you breathe in each time, this glowing light is expanding more and more. With each exhalation, you're just going to relax your body even more. 
Begin to relax your breath. And imagine that our hearts are highly connected in this session right now. Even if somebody who's watching the recording of this is going to feel connected during this meditation with us, we're gonna feel love and gratitude for each and every one of us here. Just keep expanding this ball of light. Start to focus on your breath. Slowly coming back to your body, knowing that this bowl of light is always there and our hearts are always connected. And slowly we can start blinking our eyes open. Okay, nice. Hope you guys are all feeling well and nice and grounded. So, um, there's a lot of familiar faces here. Some of you guys um, have not met yet. Um, I'm just going to share my screen with you all so you can see everything. Right, um, share screen. Okay, can you guys see me, hear me? Is everything okay? Right, so. Um, okay, cool. So, the awakened man, right? So what does it mean to be an awakened man in today's world, guys? This is what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to give you guys some tips that help me spiritually to grow. Um, and hopefully will help you all to grow spiritually, to sort of expand your consciousness, to get to a, a higher level of frequency. So a lot of us, obviously, as a man in today's world are missing initiation. And if you look at many um, cultures, ancient or older cultures, they all have initiation for man. We oh, just got another person trying to join in. Hold on. Um, Here. Sorry, guys. So, um, share my screen. Okay, so here we are. This is better. Okay. So I'm going to, sh can you guys see this? Is, is everything okay? Can, yeah? Okay, cool. So we're just going to go through this this way. So it's, it's a little bit easier. So the reason why we do this whole thing, right? So the initiation process is not happening for a lot of men because we're in a society where this is really missing. Um, whether you have a father, whatever is going on in your life, or you were raised by a single mom like I was, most probably this initiation process was sort of missed. So what happens in many other civilizations and many other cultures, sorry, is um, when boys get to this adolescence sort of stage in their life, 16, 18 years old, they're just being ripped out of their normal life, their, their childhood, taken away from their families, sent to the forest, or, or they've taken through a whole lot of torture and a lot of things, which sounds really nasty. But what happens is, is boys, transcend into manhood. And in our reality, in our society right now, this is really, really missing, right? And um, this is essential. 
let's be honest, this is essential. And we've got a lot of men out there who are still living from this boy psychology. A lot of men out there are still operating from this boyhood. We see a lot of aggression. We see as soon as, you know, somebody gets triggered, people just blast at, and, and it's all about sort of repressing this feminine energy, pushing women down. We are stronger, we are better, and we're fighting each other for no reason. We're pretty much killing each other, killing ourselves. So, we need to get in touch with our inner child, with our hearts, and we need to sort of elevate our consciousness and go through this initiation process ourselves if we never had it. This happens in many, many other ways, and you can sort of initiate yourself, or you can find a guru or a master or coach for yourself. Now, as you can see here, men are having a higher suicide rate than anyone else, I mean, other than women. And obviously we have a lot of pressure coming from our society, um, which is causing men because we're not taught when you grow up, when you're born, you don't get a manual on how to be a human, how to operate. So we feel pretty lost and our emotions are being repressed as men because we're told that big boys don't cry and all this shit, right? And, and this repressed emotion stuff, it just comes out years later or we just simply can't deal with the pressure, we can't deal with all, all, all the problems, and, and we end up hurting ourselves, we end up hurting others, we become toxic people and, and end up pretty much dying from it. Right, we deserve to be toxic, right? Free of any sort of toxic conditioning. And I'm here to get, equip you guys with the right tools, the right sort of knowledge so you can operate from a higher frequency. Um, and yeah, as you can see, we're not initiating men anymore in their development, which is unfortunately happening. So who am I? Some of you guys don't know me here yet. Um, my name is Richard. I am a, a personal trainer, a yoga teacher, a qualified NLP practitioner, and a human being. So um, I was raised by a single mom. My parents split up when I was five. And um, this kind of put me on this whole journey of what is being a man. Right. And when I got in my 20s, I was totally lost. I moved to a different country. I pretty much lived with my best friend. Then I sort of lived on my own. and I was just totally lost in the world. And eventually through spirituality, I managed to sort of rebuild myself, find meaning in life. And I realized that what my calling is, is to help other guys do the same sort of stuff, whether they had a dad or not. We need to sort of connect with our emotional self. We need to create charisma by connecting our masculine and feminine energies within and become more powerful. So let's jump on to our next one, guys. So we're going a little bit faster than I expected. Um, tell me, guys, if, if it's going too fast, if you guys got any questions, just like drop um, something in the, in, the, in the chat box. So your personality creates your personal reality. Some of you guys might be familiar with a guy called Joe Dispenza, who is an absolutely fascinating person. So what our personality is built up of is our thoughts, what we feel and how we act. And we're gonna go a little bit deeper into this because I would love to like dissect this and give you guys a lot more idea on, on what this is really all about and how it is built up. So. We have about 80,000 thoughts a day, I think. Um, now, we pretty much think the same thoughts over and over again almost every day, about 90% of the time. And about 70 to 80% of these thoughts are all negative. And they're pretty much the same as it was last, last yesterday. So imagine that you're in the same sort of cycle and your world doesn't change, your life doesn't change, right? You get the same thoughts, you make the same choices, you make the same actions, same behaviors, you get the same experiences, you get the same feelings, and that gets you back to this whole cycle. Now, to change your reality, to shift your reality as a person, it's crucial to shift your beliefs about the world, right? If you want to change your reality, you got to change who you are. So I'm just trying to find um, the slides here. Yes. Now, what is our personality? Like I said, it's our beliefs, values, emotions, thoughts, and how we act. So this is a little bit deeper than what Joe Dispenza covers. I like to dissect it into these parts. Right, so what we believe is like one of the deepest things. This is literally shaping our reality. So 
on the spectrum, on the full spectrum of, of information that is around us, what we're able to perceive is through our senses, right? We can hear things, smell things, taste things, see things, and feel things with our skin, right? And if you're superhuman, you might have more senses, but we're going to talk about that another time. <laughs> now, through these senses, you filter in the experiences, you get the experiences of the world around you. And what you really experience from this world, it might shock you, but it's actually less than 1% of reality. So it is way less than 1%. It's probably about, I think it's about zero point, less than 0.1% actually. So what we see, what we hear, what we smell, and what we understand from people's thoughts and, and everything is, sorry, what we understand from what people say and everything is actually filtered by our internal system, our internal representational system. So here comes your beliefs. If you believe a certain thing and I tell you something else, you know exactly what's going to happen. You're going to get really defensive and you're going to be like, oh no, 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 Richard, that's not right. I don't believe that. You know, that's not correct. And we have this every day, right? If something doesn't appeal to our belief system, we actually won't be able to see that in reality. We won't be able to perceive that in this reality. And, um, oh, we got another person. Hold on. Um, Sorry guys, I've just got people joining up in the whole town. So let's get back to this share screen. Okay, cool. So personal, what is our personality? So getting back to this. Um, so what we believe, we won't actually, oh, hold on. Chat, chat, chat. Oh, no worries. Ross, that's cool. Um, right, so our beliefs will shape this whole reality and we won't be able to actually experience the things that we don't believe, right? Now let's get a little bit further on here. So um, I don't think you guys will be able to see this here. Okay, cool, yes. So let's get into levels of experience or also called logical levels um, so you can create like this idea of yourself. You look like an onion. I mean, your, your experience of this world is like an onion and, um, your purpose and the, your mission, your why of your existence is at the core of your existence. Right. And some of us actually have no idea about what this is, right? You're told what you want, want to, what you should be. You got to go to university, school, etc do all this stuff. And sometimes, you know, kids really know what they want to be and eventually reality, society, everything transforms them. So you got this whole, you know, purpose mission, which again, is kind of like a faded thing. We not always notice. Then you got your identity of who you are, right? This is a really, really core idea and structure of you. Then you got your beliefs and values, which I would say beliefs are a little bit stronger, but here comes the whole, whole thing. So your values and beliefs are really, really shaping all your choices, right? So if I value um, spending more time with my family, I might turn people down and might say, look, I don't have time for it. You know, you guys get the point, I'm pretty sure. Does this all make sense so far? You guys can um, just throw, throw something in the chat or just give me a, um, a thumbs up or unmute yourself and say something cool okay um so values and beliefs super important super powerful as we go further you got skills and capabilities now honestly guys what i'm showing you here has completely reformed my life it completely changed everything for me and i hope it will do the same for you all because you'll understand how to get self-empowered really so Imagine this, right? Somebody's told, oh my God, you're not good at this. You know, as a child, you're being told, look, you'll never be able to do that. You can't do this. You're just not the right person for this. You're too short to play basketball or you're just 
too clumsy to do gymnastics or whatever it is, right? So that belief gets installed into our system. And based on that, our skills and capabilities will be affected because that child or that person might grow up and say, well, I was never able to do this thing because I don't think I can be that. So their skills and capabilities of what, what they can do in this world are highly affected by this. Whereas you look at a child who had better parents or better people around them and said, oh my God, you're so smart. You're so able to do this. You got really good skills. Like you can totally do this. And then it shifts and they go, oh yeah, I can do that. Like I'm, I was always really good about this. So you see our external environment has this huge influence on us, especially when we're younger between the age of one to five, one to six. And then obviously our skills and, sca and capabilities will affect our behavior in this world. So behavior pretty much, as you know, guys, includes everything. So what your hobbies might be, how you interact with others, what you achieve in life will be down to your behaviors, right? Whether you read books or not, whether you just sit at Netflix all day, whatever that might be. And then you got your environment around you, which is in a way still part of you because that was all created from you. That was all aligned with your purpose whether you're conscious and know this or not. <laughs> now, you can see I've got two arrows here. It's got something in the chat. Um, yes, Ross, it's probably your own connection. It seems to be fine here with me. Sorry, mate. Um, sorry, guys. So, you got these two arrows, as you can see here. And one of them, so imagine this, right? You got your environment, like I said previously, and you got these pretty negative, toxic people around you who say, dude, you can't do this, man. Like, this is what we got to do on the weekend. We go out drinking, we go out doing this, we go out doing that. And eventually these things start to like affect your, your behavior, right? Based on that behavior, you pick up different skills, different capabilities will probably go down a little bit. I'm not trashing drinking here. I'm just giving you guys an example. Based on what these people might say, of what's possible in the world and what your parents have conditioned you to believe and what your values have become over the years, you will again have a different sort of system of values and beliefs, which will obviously ride your actions. And then your identity will start to shift. You will become a different person, right? This can happen throughout a week, throughout 10 years. This is, you know, a process. And then probably your purpose and mission will be affected, which this, this, let's be honest, guys, this sounds pretty, pretty bad, right? But we all experience this. I'm pretty sure you all know what I'm talking about here. Now, when you look at the other arrow, which is coming out from the middle, you can probably imagine what I'm going to say now. You got your idea of a purpose or a mission of what you want in life, right? Now, based on that, you create your whole identity. You know who you are because it's aligned with your purpose. Based on that, you don't care what the fuck has anyone told you you have your own beliefs that this is possible. I can do this. This is who I am, right? Based on that, that will be the most valuable thing probably for you, right? Let's say it's your own health. Let's say it's transforming the entire world and, and inventing something that will completely reform everything, right? Could be whatever. Um, based on that, you will develop the skills and capabilities, right? I've seen so many people who, all of a sudden just got really, really excited about, let's say, losing weight or going to the gym. And even though they had no clue about what they're doing, they went and said, okay, I'm going to invest in this course or I'm going to go on YouTube and watch 30 hours worth of video and understand how I can shift my weight, how I can do things, right? So skills and capabilities start to completely change because of who you are and what you believe about yourself. And your behaviors will also be affected. And now, based on all these things, especially your values and beliefs, you will reform your environment. You will have a completely different environment around you. Different friends, different people, different places you go to, different ways you spend your time. Does this all make sense? Right, so some, <laughs> this is there's one question I love to ask, and you can ask yourself. Would you rather be influenced would you rather be self-empowered? And I guess 90% of the time, or probably 100% of the time, people will say to me, of course I want to be self-empowered, man. Yeah, of course you want to be self-empowered at first. 
But what if I told you, what if I told you that you're surrounded by great people, very intellectual people who are aligned with their own purpose, doing great things for the world, highly, let's say healthy, just great people. What if they influenced you? Because then you create this whole cycle of I'm affected by these great individuals. I'm hanging out with the right people. They tell me that I'm great. My behaviors are like theirs. Like I'm trying to do great things. I, they make me believe that I'm great. And my identity is becoming this great person who's highly aligned with his purpose. I'm trying to seek who I am. I'm trying to seek my purpose. You find it and then you recreate the whole thing, right? So you elevate the experience of, okay, now I know what's my purpose. I know who I am and I'm affecting my environment to make it even better. And this whole circle is created. I mean, a cycle of things. So you can imagine those two arrows are starting to connect, right? And that becomes really powerful. So right away, you're sort of, you're, the influence of the world becomes a really good thing but also you are influencing the world. You are self-empowered. I've created a PDF here, but I think you guys probably can't really read the small letters under here. Um, but it's the same sort of thing. You can see self-empowered and then being influenced. Okay. Yeah. So this is what I was saying earlier. Your perception is less than 1% of the full spectrum. Okay. So based on all those things that we just covered, your perception of reality will be different, right? I love to say to people when like somebody buys a new car and they buy, buy it in like a weird color, like they buy a yellow car and they say, man, I'm the only one in, in the city who's got this car or whatever. And obviously your subconscious mind says, oh really? Okay, let me make that true for you. So it goes around looking to make that belief true right? Because every belief is a self-fulfilling prophecy. It doesn't matter if it's absolute bullshit. It is true for you. And this is why people would rather die than change their beliefs many times, because that's, you're personally almost attacking their ego. That's how they perceive it. So it builds up the walls and says, no, 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 you're wrong. This is what I always believed. And this is why really, it's really hard for a lot of people to shift their identity because they also have the belief that they can't shift it. So your perception is highly based on that. So yeah, so back to the whole thing of like, oh, I bought a yellow car and now your brain starts looking for it. And actually you start to see that there's a lot of fucking yellow cars out there exactly like yours because you put your attention towards it, right? And it's obviously not a true thing because you, somebody else probably has that car. But just by you saying this and wanting, to be, wanting, to, wanting it to be true, your brain goes, okay, let's see if it is really true. And it will do everything to make it true. Right? I hope that all makes sense, guys. So what's the next one? Okay. Now, this sort of goes into our next topic, the law of attraction. Y'all heard about this before. I'm sure you guys all know about this. Um, and it says, you always get what you are and not what you want. Let that sink in. You always get what you are and not what you want. Now, first of all, obviously we're always like, oh my God, I really want to make a lot of money. I want to have a nice car. I want to have a nice girlfriend, whatever. Um, you being in that wanting state shows that you're not having it. So who you are is a person and this might take ages for some people to integrate and understand because it is really hard for our three dimensional consciousness to really get it because we feel the separation. But when you say, I want this, it shows that it's, it's away from you. You, you presuppose that that thing is, is far away from you and it's, it's separate from you. But you're also saying that you don't have it. So the person who you are doesn't have that thing and you're going to get more of this experience, just like you had the experience with the yellow car. You see how, how this all starts to build up. Now, based on what you believe, you're going to get experiences. And this is how you can start to use the law of attraction in full power. 
The problem is, is how you shift your experience, how you shift your identity, how you shift your beliefs. Because I tell you right now, it doesn't matter how many Instagram pages you follow or what you do. If you try to change who you are consciously, that's going to be the hardest work and your subconscious mind will go, nah, this is not going to happen. It might take years of repetition and eventually it might happen. But if you, so you go through your um, analytical mind and you get into your, your deeper part of your sort of right brain, you can start to change who you are because your subconscious mind only deals with emotions and images, right? It doesn't understand words. Every word that you say, you probably have an image attached to it, but it happens so quickly behind your eyes, let's say, that you don't see it. You can slow it down your thinking with meditation. You're gonna notice how every word has an experience attached to it. So I'd like to do a little um, exercise with you guys. If you could all stand up, that would be great. Um, this is pretty much crucial for that. So I'm going to just quickly explain what the exercise is going to be. I'm going to talk you through it actually. So, so let's do that. All you want to have is just like a little bit of space right in front of you and try not to fall over with, uh, fall over through like by the things around you or anything. If you've got any wires or cables or anything. Um, so stand up and close your eyes. We're going to shift you into a brand new identity and you guys can do that. You can take this away with you and do this as often as you need to. It's a very powerful exercise that helped me to completely shift my experience. And after I, after we do this, I'm going to tell you a little cool story about how this happened. So we're going to shift you into a brand new identity. I hope you are ready for this. So close your eyes, standing up. I'd like you to imagine in front of you, your yourself okay but this self this person in front of you sorry guys hold on i'm just gonna let these two people in guys if you just joined paris and alice if you guys just joined please follow this exercise with us so i'd like you to stand up and have about a meter meter and a half space right in front of you okay um Trying to mute everyone. Um, okay, so trying to stand up. Sorry, guys, it's taking so long. So, standing up, close your eyes, and I'd like you to imagine yourself right in front of you. Okay. Right in front of you, the person who is standing is you. However, this person has all the things does all the things and this person is the person who you want to be currently okay i'm going to give yourself some time with this so that person has all the things all the achievements all the material things all the clothes all the looks even the hair the skin you want the body type you want okay whether you want to lose weight or, or gain muscle it has the beliefs and values, the friends, just equip this person right in front of you, equip the person with all the things that you want in life. And just, just look at this person, keep your eyes closed, just see this person standing right in front of you. And you can see this person like it's, he's glowing, okay? He's powerful, like you can just feel this person's energy. And you're like so grateful to meet yourself and realize this person is you. Okay. This person is you has all the things, does all the things, believes in all the things. And it is the person you want to be right now. Now, when you're ready, I'd like you keeping your eyes closed, walk behind this person, so you're standing behind the person, standing behind yourself. And when you're ready, step right into your new self. 
and feel what you feel. Feel what it's like to be your highest self in your highest vibration. Embody this. You might feel your breathing has changed. You might feel that your posture has changed. You feel empowered. Just feel this sensation in your body. You might hear things. You might just feel some sensations in your body where you feel powerful because this is you and nothing is stopping you from being this because from this moment now on, you are this person. And what I'd like you to do now, keeping your eyes closed, is to imagine you're standing on a stage. You're standing on a stage and there is loads and loads of people clapping for you. They are super happy for you. They are showing you so much love, like you had achieved such a great thing. Just embody this experience, embody this gratitude, feel the love coming through your heart. This feels great. And I'd like to just snap out of this right now. You guys can come back when you're ready to the camera. If you want to switch your camera on, you're more than welcome to. I'm going to give everyone a couple of moments. Got quite a few people joining up. Good. Right. I hope everybody is back. Or if you're not back, then I'm going to give you another 30 seconds. So um, I would like you all to share your experience towards the end of, end of, the, end of the session about this, okay? Um, yes, you will be able to see the replay. Um, yes, there, there will be a replay, guys. If you missed the first 30, 20 minutes or so, there will be a replay. Um, and um, you're more than welcome to send it out to some of your friends, some of your guy friends, even to girls if you want to. Um, this was specifically designed for men because, because of what I told you in the beginning. Um, but yeah, feel free to share it with others. I'm going to keep the recording um, online. So I hope you guys had a great experience with just that exercise. Like I said, you can do that exercise as often as you need to, as often as you want, okay? Super powerful. Um, that tingling sensation you get, like when you get into your new body, into your new self, it's, it's just so powerful. It's so powerful. And the cool story I quickly wanted to tell you guys about this. I started doing this exercise when I was doing my um, neuro-linguistic programming um, um, qualification about five and a half months ago. And what I imagine there, um, I imagine myself like, well, similar long hair that I have, but I imagine myself with a t-shirt having the flower of life on it. It's sort of a sacred geometry stuff. And I imagine these really cool glasses and everything. And there were just certain things that I imagined. And um, what was crazy is later on, like a few weeks later, I found these glasses that I was like really wanting to get. I bought the glasses and two months later for my birthday, my girlfriend's parents literally bought me the t-shirt that I envisioned. And this was like, like, it's totally impossible. I know, but I was just, I think it's so cool that this is exactly what happened. So do this exercise if you can daily, if you can do this in the morning, even better. Okay. This is more powerful than doing affirmations and all this kind of stuff because of the emotion, because of the images for your subconscious. So, we sort of spoke about this, but the reason why these slides are designed the way they are is because, as you can see, they kind of connect. So you only accept realities that are equal to your belief system, which I kind of mentioned previously, right? Whatever you believe is the reality you're going to experience and nothing else. You will only accept thoughts that are equal to your emotional states, right? I don't know how many of you guys here experience anxiety every now and then. And how many of you sort of feel paranoid about stuff or have negative emotions? But I'm sure all of us do every now and then, right? In that emotional state, it doesn't matter if somebody tells you to calm down and everything is okay. It won't resonate. You just won't calm down. You just want to feel like that. And those are the only thoughts 
that your brain will allow in. So how can we shift our emotional state? What is, what is emotion? What is going on here? And this is going to be our next topic. By going into gratitude, like let's talk about actually first, let's go into what gratitude is, right? When you're grateful, it means that you're receiving stuff, right? You got a birthday, somebody gives you some stuff, you feel great, you feel grateful, you, you feel so thankful, it means you're receiving, right? And when we're grateful, it means we're receiving. So if we are in an emotional state of receiving or gratitude, it means things are coming to us. And we welcome it with love, even if it's negative, right? So if you feel anxious, if you feel paranoid, if you feel annoyed, if you feel angry, what you can do is you can sort of relax into that moment and be like, okay, this is what I feel. This is another opportunity for me to practice inner peace, to accept this reality. And you're going to shift your heart and your emotional state into gratitude. And by doing so, again, this whole law of attraction that we spoke about, spoke about will start to have a fuller, higher effect in your reality. Okay. Um, we're going to jump back onto this because it will make a little bit more sense if I'm able to um, explain the next topics. I'm just trying to speed up, guys, because we are um, we're going pretty pretty slow here. There's just, just so much I want to cover with you guys, and I'm really hoping you guys have a pen and paper with you or something. You can write this down because I know it's a lot. But again, I'm going to send you all the replay. So, trapped emotions and the shadow self. First, we're going to cover trapped emotions. Now, emotions, here we go, emotions. The primary human goal is survival. So there's two things we do. I mean, two, there's two reasons we do things. Actually, let's say it this way. It's either that we're going towards pleasure or running away from fear or pain, right? Just think about all the stuff you do. When you're eating, it's for pleasure. When you have sex, it's for pleasure. When you hang out with your friends, it's for pleasure. And when you get annoyed, when you get angry, when whatever happens, you're threatened, your job gets you annoyed, it's the survival mechanism kicks in and you have your negative emotions. You wanna run away from the threat. You wanna run away from the pain, whatever that is that your mind, mind uh, will perceive. Now, the main mechanism of the mind is emotions, and which can, which can create millions of thoughts. And here comes anxiety, right? So behind every thought, there is an emotion. And behind every emotion, there is the reason of survival. Right? Now, the underlying emotions behind thoughts are usually out of our awareness, right? We just have the same fucking thoughts every single day over and over again, worrying about a lot of stuff or whatever that might be. And we don't really tap into the emotional reason behind it, hardly ever. And even if we think, this is the crazy thing, even if you think you know why you feel like that emotionally and why you think that, probably there is a different emotion beyond that emotion. Okay, so for example, the reason behind, oh, sorry, the, the difference behind I can't and I won't, because many times there's nothing you can't do, right? But many times you say, oh, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this. But when you go deeper, let's say I, or you, you go, let's say you, you get a really cool girlfriend or whatever, and you guys go out and you say, I can't dance. But I'm sure you've danced at home when you were on your own nobody could see you and you were just fucking happy to move your body right and you could dance but in that state you don't want you said you can't dance because you don't want to embarrass yourself you don't want to feel shame you don't want to look silly you don't want to be judged so you say i can't dance but what you're masking is i won't do this because i'm afraid right and of course we fear judgment because it's all around us constantly. You know, you get anxiety because of judgment and we say, I can't do that. But you actually just won't do it because you're probably afraid of something. Oh, okay. 
Okay, just another joiner. Okay. Um, so I hope that all makes sense so far, guys. A basic goal of a behavior is simply to reach a desired state and emotion. So again, is the same thing. Our, our sort of desired states, you know, you just just think about your intentions. And this is one of the re, one of the ways to create and harness self awareness is by before you do something actually tapping into the intention of what you do. Okay, so I used to be a bully, I used to be a fucking dick. And I'm sorry for swearing, but I really used to be a sort of horrible kid in, in high school. The reason for this was that I got bullied first. When I moved to a different city, I got into, thrown into a completely different environment. It got really, really scary for me. And my survival mechanism was I need to get stronger. I need to attack everybody, build my own army and fight everyone who wants to suppress me. And that sort of mechanism became worse and worse and worse. And as soon as somebody was better than me, as soon as somebody posed a threat, I would push them down. But deep down, I was like, this doesn't really feel right. You know, I just feel this fear. And I know how much I love my loved ones. I know how much I love my friends. And sometimes I even stand up for the people that I bully. And in my head was this constant dissonance of why am I doing this? Right? Why am I trying to show off? Why am I trying to do that? And the intention, what I'm trying to say here is that when you do something as guys, we try to be the hero of showing off and showing how big our willies are and be like, oh my God, like I can do this. You know, people going to the gym, let's look at numbers. How much can you lift, bro? What can you squat? Right? It's just crazy. But looking into that intention and coming from a place of love can completely change who you are and what you are. Right. Now, some of you might have seen this before. This shit is absolutely crazy. Okay. Um, I'm getting so excited here. Sorry, guys. Now, this is the frequency emotions. There is, there is a guy called David Hawkins. Um, he wrote several books. You might want to write this name down, guys. There's a book called Letting Go. There's a book called Power Versus Force by the, by the guy called David Hawkins. Several books, fascinating. Like, honestly, I would say read all his books, but they're really, really long, some of them. And what he did was, is it this, he did something called muscle testing. It's a very simple thing. I'm sure some of you guys have done this. You're just gonna make a little circle with your pinky and your thumb. You can put your other two fingers in here and squeeze them apart, okay? Now, what I'd like you to do is say something positive. Just think of something positive in your head. I love myself. Or just you can just say yes. Anything positive and try to keep these two fingers together. Okay, this is not about 100% force here. Just try to just gently feel it. And can you push them apart? They can probably stick together. Now, if you try this, you can say to yourself, I hate myself. And I guarantee you, you won't be able to, unless you're really tricking yourself and forcing this, you won't be able, you will be able to squeeze these apart because your body will react and your body will always resist the negative stuff, the negative sort of beliefs, the negative stuff, negative foods, negative lower vibration. Your nervous system feels way more than what you are aware of right now. So what he did was, is that they tested a lot of people by, um, by muscle testing and, and by their emotions. And you can also ask questions. So they created this whole chart of emotions ranking from 20 to 700, okay? This scale is just created, okay? These numbers could be 10 times bigger, but they just wanted to say, okay, so what if this number of, let's say, love is 500, then compared to love, there is reason, where is this, where is that? So I know it's pretty hard to explain at first, but, and, and it really doesn't make sense at first, but let me just quickly just try to explain this. So the lowest emotion that we feel as humans is shame, right? Shame is almost like, it almost equals death. Like it's, it's so low. It's so, so low. Like you should never be ashamed. You're a human being made out of love and light, and you should never be ashamed of everything. Now, as we go higher up, you've got guilt, apathy, grief, fear, desire. 
as you go higher and higher up, you've got higher energies within these um, emotions. So when you're in fear, your body shuts down. You don't really know how to think what to do. It doesn't have too much energy. And you can imagine when you feel guilty or ashamed, you just don't even want to live, right? Now, if you look at anger, anger has a little bit more energy than fear, right? When you're angry, somehow you have the energy to, to act on it, right? Whatever that might be. But we normally act on anger. And a lot of us globally are sort of, I mean, especially now with the coronavirus situation, uh, Black Lives Matter protests and everything, like there's just so much fear and anger in the world and we're kind of vibrating on this frequency, right? Which is really low and we pull each other down. Um, now, <laughs> level of pride is another one where it's still a low vibration, a little bit higher than anger. It's still not a positive vibration. Okay. Our, in our language, we say, Oh, I'm proud of this, proud of that. But when we are actually like so proud of something, that kind of invites attack. It says you still have to defend what you believe in. When I just say, Oh, I love, I love yoga. Right. Or versus when you say, Oh, yoga is the best. I'm so proud of, of doing yoga. Then somebody might say, Well, actually, it's not that cool. I can, I can do better. Um, there's better things than that. And they start to sort of fight with you on that. And, and any, like the same thing goes in the gym, all these things can happen. So you, some of you might know about the chakras. We have seven chakras in the body, your root chakra, lowest chakra at the base of your spine is to do with survival is our lowest, lowest sort of chakra. And the emotion on this scale is courage that is attached to it, okay? And courage is sort of where we are standing globally in this world right now. Courage is when you have obviously a lot more energy than when you're angry or when you're in pride. When you have the courage, you go out and do the thing that you wanna do. And it's from this level, from level of courage, it's so easy to jump higher up, but it's also very easy to fall back, right? So when you have courage, eventually become sort of neutral. You kill the fear by doing the thing you want to do. And you're like, actually, it's, it's not too bad. I can do this. You have the willingness to do the stuff. You accept the things you want to do. You create reasons to live, reasons to do stuff, and you transcend to the level of love, right? And you all have a base vibration in your life from the moment you were born you sort of tend to obviously go up and down on the scale because you feel all these emotions, I'm pretty sure. But let's be honest, like when you feel love, when you feel joy, when you feel peace, you feel great, you feel light, right? Your brain just works so much better and easier. But when you feel these lower vibrations like anger, fear, even pride, you just feel that you've got something to defend. Like you just feel separate from the world. So based on your base vibration, that's where you are, but you can change that. By doing these exercises, by becoming aware of who you are and what you are, you can transcend to a higher level of love. Now, this is obviously something really deep and it's just no time for us to cover this. I'm currently designing a six week course for men only where you guys can like work with me personally and we're gonna cover tons of this stuff because honestly like 10 hours right now would not be enough to go through all of this stuff. So there's three ways we handle emotions. One is by suppression or repression. One of them is conscious and unconscious. Like you say, oh, I don't want to feel like this. Or your mind says, I don't want to feel like this. So it pushes the emotion down, right? You reject the emotion. Guys love doing this, including myself. We say expression, right? You express your anger or whatever the negative emotion might be, which some people say is great, but it doesn't fully take the energy away because what it does is it makes you unaware of the underlying stuff and you just give more energy to the emotion. And then you've got escapism, alcohol, workaholism, consumption of information, taking certain substances, watching TV, watching porn constantly, like all these things, right? You escape, escape the emotion. I used to do this for so many years. Man. So what is a trapped emotion? What we have repressed colors our world. 
so rest in motion. Sorry, guys, I'm just going to quickly drink some water. A trapped emotion is an emotion that gets pushed down into our bodies. So, as I said earlier, when you feel happy, when you feel at peace, when you feel love, you feel light, you feel strong, everything just seems easy, like your whole body just moves so much better, right? When you feel angry, like look at kids, they tense up, they just get so like physically, you can really see in their bodies what's going on. And you feel that too, like your, your stomach just like pulls together and you just feel all this stuff going through your body when you feel any sort of negative emotion. Now, when you have a childhood trauma, and this could be small as anything, right? It doesn't have to be something major, like for many of us, what happened. Um, when you have a childhood trauma, your subconscious mind sort of learns from that experience. And it might say, oh my God, this is way too much for me to deal with. I'm going to push this down, this memory, keep this away. And when you are ready, I'm going to show this again to you so you can deal with this. Now, none of us, I mean, tell me guys, if any of you were taught in school about any of this, but none of us are really shown and told about this kind of stuff, right? And I'm sure you have memories sometimes, best example of this, when everything just seems to go okay in your world, you feel really happy, everything seems to go right, things are fine, and somebody calls you up from your past, somebody shows up, or you get a random memory from your past that just ruins your mood. And you're like, wow, why did this have to happen? Everything was so good. Everything was so good. And now I feel like crap because of this emotion or this memory or this person. I don't want to deal with this. So you say to your subconscious mind that you're not ready to deal with this stuff, this trauma. But all it wanted to do is basically said, okay, I can, I see that you're okay right now. You're doing pretty well. I'm pretty sure you can handle this right now. Let me show it to you. But you say, no, because your logical mind tries to give reason and sense to everything. And you go, I don't want to, I don't want to look at this. I want to be happy. And you push it back down. And it takes a tremendous amount of energy for your subconscious mind to keep these emotions and keep these images down in your, in your subconscious buried down. So when these are buried down, these are the trapped emotions and they can be trapped in a muscle, your chakras, your organs, right? And later on, as these stagnant balls of energy are there, they develop into a disease. Arthritis, knee pain, headaches, problems with your organs, with your digestion, lower back pain. God, like this is so popular. Like it's so usual that people have lower back pain because of emotions. And later on, it can be even worse. Mental problems, anything like that, right? Mental disease. And as you can see here on this slide, I don't know if you guys can read this. The pressure inside of us seeks relief. So our perception looks for stimulus to let these emotions come up. That's a pretty complicated sentence, but pretty much what I should, said, said to you right now. So you have a problem buried in you. You have an emotion or, or a trauma buried in you that you don't want to deal with logically, but your subconscious mind really wants to let go of this because you, your subconscious mind wants to feel connected to the whole world. Like there's this innate purpose in us to feel connected and loved and, and connect with the world, right? That's just neutral. Like look at children, look at animals. They just love each other without any, any boundaries, right? So when we have a boundary because of our perception, or sorry, because of our emotions and repress, repress stuff, your mind, just like it was looking for the yellow car previously, your mind is looking for experiences so that it can show you that you have this shit buried down and it wants you to experience it and deal with it. But we don't have the tools, right? We, none of us have the tools to do, do that. 
some people meditate, you do yoga, and eventually you can clear these energies out physically, or you do hypnotherapy or other stuff. Whatever you do is great. But your mind looks for those. So somebody says something, bang, you're triggered. You get angry. And that's where we go into our shadow self. So we're going to cover that in a moment. Um, the power of letting go is pretty simple. I mean, everybody's like, just let it go. Let it go, man. Ugh. But we can't. We can't let it go. And it's quite hard. It's quite hard to let go. But it's actually easier than we think. Um, this book that I told you guys about, um, Letting Go, is called, from David Hawkins, talks a lot about this, that when you have an emotion, rather than trying to change it, you just, just let it be. Don't act on it. Don't express it. Don't try to change it and don't push it down. Because as soon as you try to resist something, it creates resistance. It blocks you from feeling the opposite of that emotion, right? Let's say, I can't really give you guys a good example. Let's say, well, let's say somebody, this is going to get a little too quantum 4D stuff on a subconscious level, but let's say somebody owes you money and you feel resentment, you feel angry, right? And you're like, but you don't express it too much, but you kind of like have this in your head, like this person just never gives their money, this money back or da, da, da. They've owed me money for a year and a half or five years, like what's going on. But you subconsciously keep this person in this reality by knowing that they are like this. But when you let go, like, let's be honest, out of the two of you in that situation, who's the one suffering? It's you. Because you hold the anger, you carry the weight of anger, and you don't know what to do with it. So you can let go and say, whatever. I can talk to this person. I can express to them in normal words and thoughts how I feel, but I can let go of the emotion because it actually has no purpose for me to have my body in that state physically because it affects your thoughts, the chemistry of your brain and your body. So you let go and guess what happens? Magically the person comes to you. Now I know it sounds like some of you might think it's some fairy tale stuff, but I'm sure you had experiences like this, similar. But the power of letting go is just this, just to allow this emotion to run through your body because emotions are energies in motion, right? Super powerful things. We're really blessed to, to feel emotions as human beings. It really makes us different from everything else on this planet. The shadow self. We're going to pretty much just sort of run through this, guys, so I can do the meditation and breath work with you guys. Um, the shadow self is simply a part of you that you don't want to face. And that's kind of what we spoke about this here the whole time, is that there are sides of you um, that you know is there, kind of, but you don't want to face it. And everybody who says something triggers you has something to do with your shadow self. Um, the shadow is what you don't want to see. Shadow is a part of you that needs recognition. And once it's recognized, it loses its power and it integrates. Okay. So it could be a childhood experience. It could be a nasty side of you. For me, my shadow self was this um, sort of shadow hero guy who was also a tyrant who was like, I'm going to push everybody down, but deep down, I kind of love everyone, but I'm going to show off to everyone, but I really want to be a good guy. And it's like this, don't know how to deal with it. So I'm act my energies. I'm what I'm acting on is just me being sort of nasty, but deep down I know it's not right, but I don't know how to face it. I, I don't even see that I'm, this is me. And once I got out of this environment, I was like, whoa, well, it was kind of my environment making me feel like that. I was a nasty person, but now I can let go of this identity and integrate that. So if you guys want to get into this topic more, want to learn more about this, um, Carl Jung is your person, is, is a great person on this, um, a great psychoanalyst. Um, he's not alive anymore, but he's got some great books on the topic. So boy versus men psychology. In the beginning of this whole slide, we spoke about how initiation is missing from, um, from guys' lives nowadays. And um, we stay boys. 
many of us, many guys in their 40s, 50s, 60s, they stay boys deep inside. And, and they, they still act from that place of anger. They're not grounded. But you all have met, I'm sure all of you have met men who were, who had charisma, that they just didn't need to say anything. They just show up and they just have this respect towards you, but you give them ultimate respect. And they don't demand it. They just, their presence has it, right? And where, then you meet guys, you can go to a gym, you can go wherever you want. And you just meet guys who are like really aggressive. Like they demand people's respect. And that's why they sort of get it. But you just feel that there is nothing grounded about them. You know, like you almost want to beat them up because they're just annoying, right? Um, um, so quickly go running through this. Um, so there are four main types, archetypes of the masculine. The king, the warrior, the magician, and the lover. Okay. Um, these all have shadow sides. Again, huge topic. It would probably take me three hours to cover this with you guys. And then they all have like a boy version of this. So um, the warrior is, is uh, let's say, the male archetype. And then you got sort of the man archetype. And then the hero would be the boy. So the difference between warrior and hero would be that a warrior only uses the amount of energy he needs. He knows his limits, right? He knows when to ask for help. He doesn't need anyone to recognize his power because he knows his own power. Right? And you can see this in movies and, and a lot of stuff. I just had another person joining an hour later. Um, so a, um, a warrior knows his limits, knows his power, knows everything about himself. Driven by his actions, he's measured, but he's also detached. Um, the Incredibles. I've not seen that movie, Ross, but... Um, um, this is this is happening in so many movies, guys. In so many movies, and a hero tries to show off, tries to impress. A hero tries to kill the the enemy that is unbeatable, and just goes for it because he doesn't know his own limits and he runs into his death. You can see this with many characters, but many many boys, many guys do this. They don't know their limits and they. They injure themselves or whether emotionally or physically, but they just try to impress the world of like, look at me, I'm this powerful. I can do this. I am this, I'm that. Whereas a warrior is, is detached. Now to quickly go through these four things, you can read that the king is to do with divine order, with serving others, leadership, embodying something higher than himself. The warrior I just mentioned, the magician is like the initiator. In tribes, this would be the old wise man who would initiate the young man and, 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 and um, the other men. And they have wisdom, right? Um, in Lord of the Rings, um, the magician guy, I can't remember his name right now. I'm sure some of y'all know. But um, <laughs> you get it. And then you got the lover who is creative, playful, attached, loving. Gandalf, there you go. Thank you, man. Um, loving and caring. Um, now each and every one of us has these four archetypes embedded in us in different sort of levels. Okay. Whether you're instilling your boyhood psychologically or manhood, it doesn't matter. You, you have these four in some way and just having one very strong and the other three really weak has its negatives. So for example, if somebody being a real warrior might be so cold and detached that it, he destroys everything. Relationships, he's so detached from people and their emotions that he just destroys things without him caring and realizing it, right? So when the lover comes in within yourself with the warrior, you can kind of have this hot and cold of like, okay, I have the grace, I have the love, and I'm not just destroying everything in front of me. I know when to get attached, when to care, when to love. And when king is the highest form of this, when you integrate the, the bottom three, then you can sort of get into the king energy. Many of us will probably get here at a later stage in life. You know, when, when somebody is in this king energy, it's just a different level of, of being a man, right? 
So, men in missing, missing initiation in the world. I was really um, happy about this to share with you guys. So I kind of obviously started to speak about this in the beginning. Um, I'm going to run a six week initiation program to become a conscious man, which is going to start in September. But before I talk about this, guys, I want to um, quickly do this whole breath work and meditation with you guys, because that's more important. This is all about you guys here. So I want to serve you all. So I'd like you all to, um, what have we got here? This is probably going to take about 15 minutes or so. Okay. Um, okay. We're, it's up to you if you want to lay down on your back or if you want to stay seated in a comfortable position. Um, what I'd like you all to do, because we've been sitting for a long time, so drop, open up your chest a little bit, okay? Whatever feels good to you, I just want you to open up this sort of heart area. You can interlace your fingers in between, just sort of open up, stretch out a little bit. If you want to stand up, do some stuff, just get back into your bodies a little bit. Okay. So just get in a comfortable position and um, I'm going to guide you all through this guys. So don't worry. What we're going to do is we're going to do a lot of breathing through our mouth. Okay. So I want you all to deep, really breathe. And on your exhalation, I just want you to relax your body. Okay. Don't worry about fully exhaling or anything. I just want you to like fully inhale. I let it go. Okay. If it feels better to do it through your nose, then do it. But I'd love you to do it through your mouth to get the full effect. Okay. We're going to do about 30 to 40 breaths like this. After that, what we're going to do in the last one, I want you all to fully exhale and you're going to stay there. So lock your, your throat and don't let any air in. Don't breathe. We're going to stay there for about a good minute. It's going to feel super easy. Okay, we're not going to breathe for about a minute. I'm going to tell you after a minute, if you feel like you need to breathe, please do it. Okay, if any of you guys have high blood pressure, don't do the next part. Once you need to breathe, which is probably going to be about a minute, minute and a half, I would like you to take a deep breath in, hold it, and squeeze your body. It's going to be about 10 seconds, and then we're going to exhale and then we're gonna go into our meditation, okay? So, let's start it now, simple. Breathe in, exhale. Exhale, so fully in, exhale. And just keep going. Exhale. Just keep breathing. Keep going, fully, deep, fully in. Whatever you feel, just keep breathing. You might feel a little bit lightheaded. 
You might feel a bit emotional. You might feel some tingling, some tightness. Just keep going. Just five more. Three. Two. We inhale and exhale fully. Big inhale, hold it, squeeze your body. I let go, good. So just stay where you are guys. We're going to drop into a nice meditation. So I'd like you to close your eyes now. Your body feels very relaxed. It's filled with oxygen. And each and every breath you take, I'd like you to relax your body more and more. Still focusing on your breath. Keep breathing and focus on your breath here. And try to relax your body. And as you're here, I'd like you to imagine that from the base of your spine, just like a tree, you got roots going down into the earth going down all the way into the center of the earth. And this allows you to ground your body into this physical plane. Now focusing on your breath, I'd like you to make sure that your inhale relations and exhalations are equal. And what I'd like you to imagine next is that there is a pillar of light coming down from the sky above, 
right into the top of your head. And this pillar of light has this cosmic energy of information, love, joy, peace, coming down right into your body. And as this energy comes down, through the center of your chest, the center of your solar plexus, your stomach area, this energy comes out to form a ball of light, a sphere around your body, like an aura. This is like a glowing sort of white, yellow color. As you feel, as you breathe in, you're pulling more and more of this light into your body as if you're not even breathing anymore. You're just pulling energy and light to feed your body. And just focus on this for now. With each exhalation, this light is coming out through your solar plexus, forming this ball of light around you, protecting you, equipping you with the right sort of frequency. Just keep relaxing into this, get comfortable here. And this pillar of, pillar of light above you is getting stronger it's bringing more energy and light inside your body. Every breath you take, you pull more energy in. And you transform this energy into the right frequency for your body that surrounds you and protects you. I would like you all to come back into your breath, deepening your breath. And now you let the, this pillar of light come fully into your body. Just let it drop right into your body. It just integrates like you're glowing. And this bowl of light that we created in our chest in the beginning of our session, it goes there, it goes there into our hearts, amplifies the love in our hearts. And as you fully let this pillar of light come into your body and integrate, you feel that you've come back into your body now, feeling the chair or the ground that you sit on. I 
I'd like you all to place your hands on your heart. And feel gratitude for the practice. Gratitude for showing up and investing this time in yourself. Put your hands together in your heart center. Namaste. You can slowly blink your eyes open. Thank you so much, guys. Um, if any of you would like to, if you have any questions, anything you would like to share, then feel free to unmute yourself and tell me how it was for you. I'd love to have a little chat here with you guys and, and hear your stories, your experiences of this session, what you guys think. Man, that was impactful. Thanks, man. I mean, it's the first time I've ever done like the breathing exercises as an introduction to a meditation session. I'm like, holy hell. <laughs> Gonna be doing that from now on for sure. <laughs> yeah, thanks, oh, Richard. Favorite. That was really good. Um, nearly passed out though, breathing exercises. <laughs> Felt really, um, really nauseous at one point. Yeah. I to sort of cool, cool it down a bit, but maybe you get better at that over time. I don't know. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you will, um, you'll probably get to like a couple of minutes. Um, I did it for, for like four or five days and I managed to get to about two minutes and time just seems like it doesn't exist. And, and mm. it's there. I was very glad that you said you might feel like you might pass out. I was like, oh, good, that's normal then. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's totally normal. Um, Hayward, what, and I don't know if you pronounced your name correctly. Um, is, it, how was your, what was your biggest takeaway? How did you feel? Uh, you can call me Howie. makes it easier for everyone outside of Scandinavia. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, it's kind of funny, like you were talking about the law of attraction and then you went straight into the archetypes. Archetypes is something that's been a big focus of mine for the last like two weeks. It's been a big focus of my entire summer because I need to like figure that shit out. It's like what you were talking about, like with Jung and like the boy versus man. It's been like a couple of experiences where I've been feeling the need for that sort of initiation. So the way you brought all that together, I think I think that was a really good takeaway for me today. I'm glad, man. I'm glad, glad to hear that. Would you feel like it, it, it sort of transformed things in you? It piqued my curiosity. I'm intrigued and I'm probably going to spend a lot of time like diving way more into that material. And yeah, I mean, just the way that I feel now, like coming into this session, it was not in the best state of mind. Definitely a bit of anxiety ridden in myself today. So yeah, this, this is crazy. I mean, that was a five, five minute, yeah, 15 minute session and damn dude. <laughs> Man, I'm so glad to hear that. I'm so grateful for that. I'm so glad it helped you and everything. There's a really good one only. called um, um, King, Warrior, Magician, and Lover. That's literally the title of the book. It's written by two guys. If you just type this into Amazon, it comes up with a, a really small book, but it sums up the archetypes and talks a lot deeper about this. Um, anyone else, guys? Anyone else who wants to sort of share their experiences? No, Richard, all I've got to say is thank you for that. That was actually really good. <laughs> Obviously, you know me personally, so you know what kind of I'm going through at the moment, stuff like that, and that's actually relaxed me a lot more, especially having a stressful day at work and got a stressful day tomorrow at work. I feel a lot happier. You can probably see that anyway. Yeah, man. I look a lot happier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Um, tomorrow won't be a stressful day, man. It will be a brand new day. 
It will be a brand new day. It will be a new day with new experiences, new opportunities for you too. Yeah, it's only stressful because we've got people not coming in, so <laughs> we've got less staff. <laughs> Anyone More responsibility. Else? Anyone else? Brian, Paris, Sergey, if you guys want to share how you felt, feel free to, to jump on. Might as well say something. I'm here, right? What's up, guys? Hey, man. Yeah, yeah, I've done some stuff like this before. I've done some little retreats and stuff like that. It can be, uh, it can be difficult to get yourself to sit and do it, though. So I appreciate you uh, putting it out into the world because I was able to just click a couple buttons and then end up here. I'm sorry I came in late, but I caught the the end of the exercise there. Um, yeah, I, I've been big into Wim Hof and Carl Jung, and I've been binging a lot of this archetype stuff lately. And this, uh, there's like not a lot of refuge for for men at this time so it's like it's it's cool like you said to have an initiation to be able to do something together be able to bring yourself back to home get that breath flowing and and tap into the thing that we lost in modern society the the warriors and kings that we used to be because now we're just you know like keyboard warriors and thumb warriors and you know we're all trying to make an impact and all trying to be somebody all trying to be men in our lives and trying to be um, stronger for the people around us and uh, and that starts right here with your breath with your attention with your awareness being able to interact with the people that you love and people that you don't know with respect and uh, without judgment and uh, to be able to function in this world as a, as a helpful human in order to create a better world. And uh, I'm glad to see, even though there's only a handful of us here, that people are doing it, people are doing the work. And I uh, appreciate it, appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much, man. That's beautiful. Blessings to you, man. I really, really appreciate those words. Thank you. Well said. Anyone else, guys? Anyone wants to share their experience? How was the um, the stepping into your new reality stuff? I did a similar one before, um, which which it reminded me of, which was um, just something off YouTube, um, which it got you to envision walking through a forest and getting to like a a, a, um, a triangle of light, and at each point was your current self. One was yourself as a child, and one was like envisioning yourself. At the, at the end of your life as an old person. And then it was bringing them together in the middle of that light. Um, yeah, it reminded me of that sort of visualization. Um, but yeah, it was, it was cool. So just, just sort of like a, an alternative idea there. Um, yeah. Mm. Nice, nice, nice. Like, like I said, guys, that, that exercise, the more you do it, the better you become at it. It's really tricking your subconscious mind and and I do this with some of my clients, um, helping them to lose weight or, or just do any, any of the stuff that they want to do. And it's just insane. Like when you, when you see somebody from the outside do it and they step into that body, like they literally, like you can see that they just literally get taller and they just start to breathe. Like they just become so powerful and, and they come out of it like, oh my God, like this is, this is me. I can do this. So yeah, I'm, I'm so grateful for all of you guys. Um, like you guys said, like Brian said, we, we only had a handful of people here, um, but that's okay. I understand some people couldn't show up. Um, if you guys could leave your like Instagram or Facebook um, stuff here, I would love to connect with you all. Um, and I can send you guys a, a replay so you can share that with other people. Um, How we said, is it possible to be a hybrid of two plus archetypes or do we usually fall into slowly one of these? No. So you are all four. You're all four all the times. And um, um, it's always a, a mixture of those four. Yeah, so, I think I asked that question a bit too early because you explained it pretty well two minutes later. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So it's, you're always a mixture of the four and, and based on, you know, where you are. Um, it just all sort of built up based on that. You know, I, I found my, I used to be the sort of lover type of guy for too long uh, with no boundaries. And I think many of us on this sort of journey tend to be there of like, oh, I'm a, you know, I went from a bully to being a pushover and everybody kind of stepping over me and me just loving everyone to now sort of shifting into the warrior and taking action and being like, okay, actually, 
let's serve and let's do all these things well. Um, yeah, guys, if you just want to, yeah, I got you, hey, you, and um, Sergey, I got you as well. I got you, Brian. Um, Richard, yes. may I ask a question? Of course, man, anything. Go ahead. What is the di you mentioned earlier about the, um, how pride in yourself can be uh, closer to the negative side of emotions. What would be the difference between expressing pride for yourself uh, in opposition to pride for somebody else? Being proud of someone rather than yeah. being proud of yourself. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the, the simplest way I can sort of answer that question is that every emotion starts with love. Every human behavior has a positive intention, right? When you break it down, everything starts with love and it becomes a lower vibration and becomes whatever it is. So when you're proud of somebody, or you're proud of yourself, isn't that really just love? But when you're proud in a way of this is better than that, is that love? I mean, that is love as well, because you still love what you do there, but you're implying that this is better and that is better. So it's not the word, because the thing is, in our, in our language and, and you know, in different languages say this differently, obviously, but by saying, oh, I'm so proud of you, there's really nothing wrong. It says that, you know, you've done well and this is how we communicate it. But saying that, you know, you're proud of an achievement and you sort of want to defend it is a different story, you know? So it's, it's, um, it's really interesting when you read the book called Letting Go. Um, maybe I can just give you a, a little um, idea of this. Just if you hold on literally two seconds. Um, So for example, let's do it. Let, let me give you a better example. I've, I've got my notes. So spirituality, nasty stuff, religion, mm -mm, right? People who are religious, they're fucking proud. My God is better than yours, right? Or spirituality, I'm more developed than you are. Or I'm more, you know, more enlightened, I'm more aware, I'm more self-aware. And that's when we become so proud that we block our own development. And that's what invites attack of somebody else saying, actually, my God is better than yours or da, 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 this and that, right? So that's where I'm saying pride is negative stuff of blocking the development of recognizing that actually, yes, you are good. Yes, I'm good, but I stay humble and I know someone can do better than me. I know that you might have the answers that I'm looking for and I'm, I'm shutting that down or might, you might have a whole better idea than what I do. Does that give you an answer? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. No worries, man. <laughs> right guys. Is there anything else you guys want to ask, say anything? Feel free. No. Okay. Right, I'm, uh, I'm just gonna quickly do like a video. Uh, you guys are all here. Um, like, thank you so much all for joining. I know it's just only a few of us here, but um, yeah, um, thank you guys. Um, I might tag some of you who posted your IG here if I can. And um, yeah, it was lovely to connect with you guys. I'm gonna message you guys pre um, privately, send you all the link to, um, um, to the replay and yeah, feel free to share it with others. Feel free to message me if you guys got any questions. Like I said, I'm going to do a whole six week course around all these topics going really, really deep. And I'm also, um, currently setting up a Facebook group for us men like this to connect. Okay. I'm going to invite you guys to that. If you, if you're happy for that, uh, happy for that to happen. Um, I was just, but sorry. Um, yeah, so I'm going to invite you guys. I'm going to message you and send you the link for that. If you guys are also on Facebook so we can all connect and, and share our experiences and also there feel free to invite anyone 
of your friends, family, loved ones. Okay? Cool. Thanks very much. Thanks, guys. Blessings to, blessings to you all. Much love to you all. And hopefully we'll see you on the next one of these. Thank, Thank you, Richard. Thank you. <laughs>